today we'll be looking at the appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton. Now, when I talk of appendicular skeleton, appendicular skeleton has to do with the, the other parts of the body or of the skeleton that is being attached to the axial skeleton. Remember, the axial skeleton consists of what? Vertebral column. Uh, scalp and then there was the rib cage. So now, when I talk of the appendicular skeleton, it talks about your hand, or let me say your legs, and then your uh, limb girdles. Okay, appendicular appendages, something that has been attached to a main body is said to be what appendicular skeleton. So we'll talk about the hand and then the the legs. Or let me say the four limbs and the hand limbs. The four limbs and the hand limbs. So the we are saying that the legs are divided into the four limbs and then the hand limbs. Okay, the four limbs basically talk about your your hand. The hand, the hand makes the four limbs. Okay, and I'm saying that the four limbs consist of the humerus, the radius, the ulna, and then the um, carpals. Metacarpals and phalanges. I want to show you a skeleton now. Let's all concentrate on this skeletal system, okay? All of you should watch the screen and then concentrate on what I want to tell you. I said that the appendicular skeleton consists of the limbs, okay? The limbs are the four limbs. These are your four limbs, the hand. The hand from here to here are the four limbs. When we talk about the hand limbs, the hand limbs are your legs. Here, from your thigh to the feet, or yes, this side. So these are your hand limbs, and these are your four limbs. These are your four limbs, and the other, the legs are your what? Hand limbs. So appendicular skeleton makes up the limbs and the limb girdles. When I talk of limb girdles, limb girdles are the bones that allows your limbs to be attached to the main skeleton. Remember that the main skeleton or the body of the skeleton is the axial skeleton. We said the skeletal system is divided into two. We have the axial and the appendicular. Now, appendicular skeleton are your limbs and your limb girdles. Axial skeleton are the main body of the skeleton which consists of the skull. This is the skull, the head portion. This, which consists of the skull. The rib cage, what we are seeing here. The rib cage. And then the vertebral column, this one. I so the vertebral column is called the backbone. It's normally at the back of the skeleton, okay? And I'm saying that appendicular skeleton are your limbs. And these limbs, are attached to the main body, or let me say, are attached to the axial skeleton. Okay, so now these four limbs and the hand limbs are. I mean, makes up the what the nuclear skeleton. And when I talk of the limb girdles, the limb girdles are the bones that allows the appendicular skeleton, or let me say that allows the limbs to attach itself to the what main body. Okay. So now when we talk of the four limbs, the four limbs are the hand. Okay. And these four limbs, we have they are in three parts. We have three parts here. You can see this side. This part of your hand is called the upper arm. This part of the hand is called the forearm, or you can say the middle arm. And this part of the hand is the hand, or this part of the forelimb is the hand. I'm taking it again. We have the upper arm, the forearm, which is here, the middle side, 
here and we have the hand itself okay so the forelimb basically consists of the the upper arm the forearm and then the hand okay now let's look at the bones that makes up our forelimb let's look at the bones that make up our four limbs the bones that make up our four limbs when we take the upper arm here the bone here the bone here is called the humerus okay the bone here is called the humerus so the bone that makes up the upper arm here is called what humerus so you can see the arrow this is what humerus now when you take the lower arm here there are two bones the forearm here or the middle arm consists of two bones and these two bones are called ulna and radius i'm taking it again we are looking at the forearm the forearm which is your arm here now i'm saying that taking the forearm the forearm has three main parts the upper arm, the middle arm, and then the what? The hand, the upper arm here, the middle arm, or you can say the forearm, and then we have the what? The hand. When you take the forearm, the, when you take the upper arm here, the bone that is found in the upper arm is called the humerus. Humerus. When you take the middle arm here, the bone that is the the middle arm consists of two bones. And the name of these two bones are called radius and honor. Please, all of you should look on the screen and watch what I am talking about. The bones that makes up the forearm or the middle arm are two, namely the honor and then the radius. Most of the time, the honor is uh, longer than the radius, okay? The honor is normally longer and larger than the radius. And then the honor also always lies in front of the radius. You're looking at these two bones. These are the two bones that makes up your forearm or your middle hand or your middle arm. These two bones, one is called radius, the other one is called what? Honor. And I'm saying that if you look at the two bones critically, you realize that one is longer than the other or one is larger than the other. The longer bone here is called the honor. And then the shorter one is called the one, the radius. Now the honor always lies in front of the radius. Okay. Now let's come to the third part of the hand, of the arm, which is the what? The hand. Your hand itself. Remember, I said the forearm is made up of three parts: here, here, and here. So if you look at this one, the bone here at the upper arm is called the humerus. The bones that make up the middle arm or the forearm is called the radius and honor. Honor is always longer than the radius. Now let's look at the unmute yourself, Daniel. That is good. Now when you look at the hand here the third part of the forearm, which is the hand here, okay? This side, this whole side makes up the hand, okay? Now we are saying that, taking this from your wrist, the bones that make up the wrist are called carpals. Carpals, carpals are the bones of the wrist. Carpals are the bones of the wrist okay now these bones of the wrist are small 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 and they are eight in number sorry they are nine in number so when you take the hand here the bone, we are starting, the hand starts from your wrist level to your fingers, okay? The hand, the hand, it starts from the wrist to your fingers. So now, the bones that are found at the wrist or in the wrist are called carpals. And this carpal, these are the carpals. So the carpals are small, small bones found in the wrist. And these carpals are nine in number. We have nine carpals. 
nine carpals are found in their wrist. So when you ask that, what, are, what is the name of the bone found in their wrist? The wrist bones are called carpals. Now, when you take your palm, the palm, the bones in the palm are called metacarpals. The bones in the palm are called metacarpals. The bones in the palm are called metacarpals. Now, these metacarpals are um, five in number. Okay, we have five metacarpals in all. These metacarpals are five in numbers, okay? Now, when you look at the metacarpals, which is the bones in the palm, you realize that the end of the metacarpals here attaches itself to the carpals. And when you look below, too, you realize that the end of the metacarpals at the lower side attaches itself to the bone here, okay? Now, the bones that makes up the fingers are called phalanges. The bones that make up the fingers are called phalanges, or you can say digits. The bones that make up the fingers are called phalanges or digits. The bones that make up the fingers are called phalanges or digits. Now, let me pause on the forearm. And then if you have any questions, raise your hands. I'll ask you to unmute yourself. Then you can ask the question relating to the arm, what I just spoke about right now. If you have any question. Yes, put your hands up. If you didn't understand what I was saying, also put your hands up. I'll ask you to unmute yourself and then you can make your submission. We are looking at the appendicular skeleton. Nobody is, is, is asking a question, meaning that you understand what I am saying so far? Okay. If there are no questions, then let's go to the, the legs, okay? A quick review. We said that the appendicular skeleton consists of the limbs and limbs together. Now, I told you that the limbs are two. We have four limbs and hand limbs. Four limbs are your hand. Hand limbs are your legs. So what I just spoke about is your hand or is the hand. Okay, what I just talked about is the four limb. Now, let's come to the hand limb. Let's come to the hand limbs, your legs. Here, these are our legs, okay. Now, the hand limbs also consist of three portions, just like the four limbs. We have the upper, the middle, or the shank. And then we have the foot, okay. I'm taking it again. The hand limbs, which are your legs, consist of three parts. The hand limbs, which are your legs, consist of three parts. The upper part, which is normally the thigh, okay? The thigh is the upper part. So the thigh here is one part of the hand limbs. Now here, this side, is your shank. Your shank, or you can say the... The, 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 the lower leg, okay? Here is your foot. Here is the foot, here. So now, in these three portions too, or in these three parts too, we have bones found in there, okay? The bones that are, or the bone that is found in the thigh, the thigh consists of one long bone, just like the, the femur, right? just like the humerus. Okay, if you compare this and this, just look at it and let's do a comparison here. The upper part of the thigh or the upper part of the leg, okay, which is the thigh, consists of a long bone called the femur. When you are relating it to the hand, I said that this one is called what? Humerus. But for the thigh, this one is called what? A femur, okay? Same way, if you look at this side too, the lower leg too, you can see that the lower leg also have two bones, just like the arm. So this side also have two bones. These two bones are the tibia and then the fibula. This is it. Look at the diagram very well. The tibia and then the fibula. These are the two bones that makes up the shank. 
okay these are the two bones that makes up the shank these are the two bones that makes up the shank please if you have any question just raise your hands i'll ask you to unmute yourself then you can ask your question feel free if i'm saying something that you don't want to understand it just let me know okay raise your hands and let me know so yeah, i'm saying that the, the okay kenneth your hand is up unmute yourself and then let the question flow madam yes you can ask for me the the shank the shank is spelled s-h-a-n-k shank are you Thanks. okay yeah. Any other question? Any other question? No. Okay. So I'm as I was saying, I said that the shank here or the middle leg, yeah, the middle part consists of two bones known as the what? The tibia and then the fibula. Let's all look on the screen. Okay. Now the tibia is always larger than the fibula the tibia is always larger than the what fibula and the tibia is the longest bone in the mammalian skeleton when you take the skeleton with the mammals you know what mammals are mammals are warm-blooded animals you and i are mammals okay mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact we are also vertebrates because i told you that vertebrates are organisms that have back bone okay so when you take these two bones the tibia and then the fibula the tibia um, is longer than the fibula, okay? Just like this one, the radius and then the ulna. I told you the ulna is longer than the what? Radius. Now, in the human mammalian uh, body, the, 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 the tibia is the longest bone that can be found in the skeleton. So when you take the whole skeleton, the tibia is the longest bone. Another thing... Someone has just unmuted himself or herself. Please mute yourself. Good. Someone has unmuted. Okay. So um, when you take the, 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 the middle hand here. All right, Justin, your hand is up. Unmute yourself and then ask your question. Okay, madam. Yes. And um, please, you said the tibia Sorry. is the longest bone uh, in the mammalian body, right? Yes. yes. In your class, yes. Okay, okay so madam, way. please, can we compare the tibia to the femur? Can you? Compare the tibia mm -hmm. to the femur bone. Yes. As one of the longest bones. Yes. Now the femur, because the femur is the largest amongst all the bones. Okay. The femur is the largest here. The thigh bone. Okay. Is the largest. But in terms of length, the tibia is the longest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just yeah. now there. The femur, okay, which is yes, the thigh bone, the bone yeah. of the thigh, okay, called the femur, is the largest bone. Yeah. In the mammalian skeleton, okay. are you okay? But okay. the tibia yes, is the longest. Oh, okay. Do you okay. understand it? Yes, madam. Okay, good. Yes, madam. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you too. So go back to the mute mode. All right. So as we are saying, the tibia is the longest amongst the, I mean, amongst all the skeletal or the bones that makes up the what the skeleton. Okay. Now let's move to the foot. Remember that I said the hip length or your legs consists of three parts. The here, here, and here. The thigh, the shank, and then the foot. Okay? Comp now, whatever we are doing, compare your leg to your hand as well. You realize that the foot, the bones of the ankle, okay? The ankle bones are called tassels. The bones here, that makes up your ankle. They are called tassels. Now, these tassels are small, 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 small bones, and they are nine in number, okay? The tassels are nine in number. But then, 
one of the tarsal elongates to your heel. The bone that makes up your heel is, is part of the bones of the ankle. So for instance, your, your, your ankle has nine bones, okay? But one of them has stretched to the back to form the heel bone. Okay, now when you take the foot itself, the foot itself, the foot bones are five, okay? They are five in number. And the name of the bones that makes up the foot is called metatarsals. Remember, the bones that makes up the palm is metacarpals. The foot is metatarsals. Are you okay? Compare this to, you're looking at your leg and your hand, the comparison. The bone that makes up your palm is metacarpals. The bones that makes up the foot is metatarsals. The bones of the ankle are called tarsals. The bones of your wrist are called carpals. Are you okay? Now, the fingers also have bones, and the name of that bone is called phalanges for both foot and then hand. The, 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 the name of those bones or the, the bones of the fingers are called phalanges, okay? Now, these phalanges extend to your fingernails or the claws. Is it clear? The phalanges extends to the claws or your fingernails. Now, normally we think that uh, in mammals, okay, our limb orientation is termed as pentadactyl. Pentadactyl because every mammal has five uh, digits or phalanges, uh, except uh, rabbits that have four, okay? But then, uh, because rabbits, the big toe is missing, but we other mammals have what? five so you are saying that the body plan or the 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 the, the limb plan or of every uh, vertebrate is termed as pentadactyl okay it's termed as pentadactyl now the phalanges can also be called digits remember the bones that makes your fingers are called phalanges or digits Okay, now I told you that we have pentadactyl limbs orientation, or we have five limbs, uh, I mean five phalanges. Okay, now when you take these five phalanges, the toe, okay, the toe has two bones, and then the rest of the fingers have three, 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 three bones in each. I'm taking it again. The phalanges, okay, the big toe, both your leg, both your foot, and then your hand, okay. The phalanges in there have um, the, 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 the toe or your thumb. Yes, Alf, your hand is up. On Madam, yourself, yes. please can you go over the bones uh, in the foot again, under the foot part? Okay, I said that, okay. So now unmute yourself. Sorry, mute yourself. Now I said that. Put your hand down and mute yourself, Sarah. I said that when you take the foot, okay, the foot starts from your ankle, just like the way I said your hand starts from the wrist. I said that the, the, the hand length has three parts, the thigh, the shank, and then the foot, okay? The foot is starting from your ankle. Now, I said the bones that make up the ankle okay, are called tarsals, T-A-R-S-A-L, tarsals. And the bones that makes up the, the foot, the foot itself, are called metatarsals, okay? And then the bones that make up your fingers, or let me say your toes, since you're talking about the leg, the bones that make up the toes are called phalanges or digits. That is for the leg or for the hand leg. But for the forelimb, the hand itself, the bones that make up the wrist are called carpals. Those that make up the palm are metacarpals. And those that make up the fingers are the what? Phalanges. I believe you're, you're, you are okay now, Sarah. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Any other question before we continue? 
any other question before we continue? Okay, Justin, uh, Justin, sorry, your hand is up. Uh, Madam, yes. please, if I heard you clearly, okay. you said the bones that make up the ankles are called tassels. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, madam, in the please in the demonstration you give us, it is it is saying the bones that make up the ankle is talus. Yeah. No, it's the same thing. It's, uh, you see, because it's one, like singular. They they are I told you in biological drawing, when you label one part, you yeah. give a plural name to it. Well, oh, okay, okay. Okay, yes. okay. So that's okay. but because you see, I told you that the tassels are made up of small, small, small bones. So bones. Small bones, yeah. Ah, okay. You understand. Okay. 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 Good. okay. So any other question? Or should we continue? All right, since there's no leg, I believe we are okay with the legs. We are looking at appendicular skeleton. This is the topic we are treating today, appendicular skeleton. And I said appendicular skeleton consists of legs and limb ghetto. So what we are talking about has to do with your what? Your legs. The four limbs and then the hand limbs. The limbs are two, are two. Four limbs and hand limbs, or your hand and your leg. The four limbs are for the hands, hand limbs are for the what? legs. And then we try to demonstrate or look at the bones that make up these two limbs, which are the four limbs and then the hand limbs. A quick uh, review, the four limbs, uh, when you take the four limbs, it consists of three parts. The upper part, the upper arm, the middle arm or the forearm, and then the hand itself. And I said that the, the upper arm, the bone found there is called the what? Humerus. The, mid, the middle arm or the forearm, there are two bones over there. These are called the ulna and then the radius. When you take the hand itself, the wrist have bones known as what? Carpals. The palm have bones known as metacarpals. And then the fingers are made up of bones called phalanges. So, in summary, the forearm consists of bones, or the, in summary, the bones that mix up the whole forearm are humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. I hope it is clear. Now the hand limbs. The hand limbs also have the upper hand limb or the thigh, the shank, and then the foot. The upper part of the hand limb consists of a long bone called the femur. The shank consists of two bones known as the tibia and then the fibula. And then the, um, the foot have uh, bones in the ankles called tassels. The foot itself, bones there called metatarsals. And then the bones of the toes are called phalanges or digits. And I said that in the phalanges, the big toe contains two bones and then the um at the rest of the, the toes have three, three 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 bones in them same applies to their fingers the big finger or the thumb consists of two bones and then the other fingers have three 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 bones in them and i said the phalanges extends to the ones the finger nose or the claws I, that is what we said so far. So in summary, the hand limb in general consists of bones such as femur, tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. So in summary, these are the bones that make up the one, the, 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 the hand limbs. Okay. Now let us look at something critical over here. If you look at the upper arm here, here, if you look at this upper arm here, okay, you can see a head here. Now, the head of this upper arm is being fused to, uh, you see your shoulder bone, your shoulder, the shoulder. You realize that, um, or if you could cast your mind back to the skeleton I brought to class before we went home, the upper arm had something like a head. What you are seeing here, this big 
a portion, a distinct head. This big portion over here. Are you okay? Uh huh. Now, this big portion over here is being fixed into um, the clavicle. I'll be, I'll be talking about clavicle very soon. Okay. This, the space in there that allows the head to be fixed into your clavicle to form the, the shoulder joint is called the glenoid cavity. Is called the glenoid cavity. Are you okay? Now, watch here too. Watch the leg as well. Yeah. The thigh. Realize that the thigh also have a head over here. You realize that the thigh has a head here. Okay. Now, if you look at the thigh, you realize that the head of the thigh is being fused into this side. Are you okay? The hole over here that allows the head of the, 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 the femur to fix into the, the, to give you your hip bone is called acetalabum. Acetalabum is called A C E T A B U L L U M. Acetalabum. Acetalabum. Okay. Now let's watch here too. Look at this side. You can see some, some part I've mentioned or I've labeled patella, okay? Now, you see the bone here, the bone of the thigh here, called the femur. If you look at the lower part of the femur here, if you look at this critically, there is some true space over here before this small patella is fished into. Eh? There are some... Um, to like this, this one and that one here, yeah. okay, this one and that one, to create something like a space to allow the patella to fix it. The patella is the bone that covers the joint over there to form your knee. The patella is a small bone, okay, that allows, that covers the joint of the, of the knee. You know, the knee makes, Consists of the this one. We'll be looking at you. Let me leave this. I get to joint. I'll throw more light on this side. Okay. We'll be looking at joints very soon. So basically, these are the legs, the head legs, and then the forelegs. Now let's look at the second part of the pedicular skeleton called the limb girdle. Limb girdle. If you look at my slides, uh, the previous slides before. Um, I showed the skeleton. I said the appendicular, watch here. I said, we did. I said the limbs are divided into four limbs and head limbs, while the limb girdles are divided into pectoral and pelvic girdle. Let's start the point from here. Appendicular skeleton consists of limbs and limb girdle. The limbs are what we just talked about. So the limbs are divided into four limbs and head limbs. So these are the four limbs are your hands, and then the hand limbs are your what? Your legs. Now let's look at the second part of the appendicular skeleton called the limb girdle. Okay, the second part of the appendicular skeleton called the limb girdle. Now, when we talk of limb girdles, limb girdles are bones that allows the limbs to attach itself to the axial skeleton. Limb girdles. They are bones, okay? They are bones. That allows the limbs, you know the limbs I'm talking about, your hands and then your legs. So the bones that allows your hand and then your legs to attach itself to the axial skeleton. Remember that I said axial skeleton consists of the skull, vertebral column, and then the rib cage. Now the axial skeleton is the main body of the skeleton. The axial skeleton is the main body of the skeleton. And the appendicular skeleton, I just something is appendicular, something that is like auxiliary, attached to something, okay? So the limb girdles are the bones that allows your hand and your leg to attach itself to the main body or to the axial skeleton. Now, the limb girdles consist of or are, are divided into two. The limb girdles are divided into two. 
Those two divisions are called pectoral girdle and pelvic girdle. Please, if you don't understand something, I want us to take it one after the other. Just raise your hand, ask questions on what I said, and then we'll continue. Okay. Okay. So I'm saying that the limb girdles are divided into two. We have the pectoral girdle and then the pelvic girdle. Pectoral girdle and pelvic girdle. When we talk of pectoral girdle, pectoral girdles are the bones that allow the hand to be attached to the main body. Pectoral girdle are the bones that allow the hand or the forelimb to attach itself to the axial skeleton. And the pelvic girdles are the bones that allows the leg or the hind leg to attach itself to the axial skeleton. I believe we are following. I'm taking it again. We have finished talking about the lips and we are now talking about limb girdle. And I'm saying that, let's look on the skeleton again. The limb girdles are the bones that allows the lips, as the name goes, limb girdle. So girdle means bones. Limb means the two types of limbs, the hand and then the, what, the leg. So limb girdles are the bones that allows your leg and then your hands to attach itself to the main body. And I said that the limb girdles are divided into two. We have the, these two are the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle. Pectoral girdle allows your hand, or pectoral girdle are the bones that attaches the hand to the axial skeleton. Pelvic girdle are the bones that attaches the leg to the axial skeleton, okay? Now, let's look at the bones that make up the pectoral girdle, or the bones that allows your hand to be attached to the axial skeleton. Are you okay? Pectoral girdle. Now, we are saying that when you take the pectoral girdle, now watch here. This is the hand, okay? This is the hand or this is the forelimb. Now, the bones that allows the forelimb, the bone that allows the forelimb to attach itself to this, this is the main body of the skeleton. This is the main body of the skeleton from the head to the here, vertebral column is the main body of the skeleton. So now, the bones that allows the hand to attach itself to this, and the bones that allows the leg to attach itself to this is what we are talking about now. And I said, the bones that allows the hand to attach itself to this one is called pectoral girdle. And the bones that allows the leg to attach itself to the main body is called pelvic girdle. So this, this, this bone is what makes up your pelvic girdle here. Because if you look at the diagram very well, this is the bone that is allowing the leg to attach itself to the body. And if you look at the top side very well, this is the bone, this one and this one, this and this, this and this, this and this, are the bones that are allowing the hand to attach itself to this one, the main body. I hope I am making sense. So now, the bones that make up the pectoral girdle, somebody should look at the diagram very well, look at the labeling I have done on the diagram very well, and tell me, at least mention just one bone that allows this, this hand to attach itself to the, this is the main body of the skeleton. Are you okay? So look at the diagram very well, and someone should tell me the bones that allows the hand to attach itself to the main body. Who can help me? It's Kia. Okay, Sedem. Jan 2 Sedem, your hand is up. Yes, unmute yourself and then tell us. The clavicle. The clavicle, good. And what else? Watch. Um, the the stemum or the, the stomom. The stemum. New. Okay. The the stem. Okay. The stem. Now, uh, 
the sternum, you didn't watch the diagram very well. The clavicle is correct, but the sternum yeah. is not correct. Watch the diagram yes. very well, okay? So watch the diagram very well and tell me, any other person that can help us? Okay, so um, thank you on mute yourself, mute yourself and then let's go. Now, that was very good. If you really observe the diagram very well, as she said, the clavicle here, this is the clavicle here. Okay, the clavicle, this is the clavicle. Normally we call it the shoulder bone or the shoulder blade. It's normally found at the back. When I brought the skeleton, you saw it. It's normally found at the back here, okay? So this is the clavicle, okay? So the clavicle is an example of a pectoral girdle or it's an example of a bone or it's a type of a bone that allows the hand to attach itself to the main body. Now, aside the clavicle, watch here to this one, this bone. This bone. It's called the collar bone. The collar bone. Okay. So there's the sorry, the collar bone or clavicle. This is the collar bone or clavicle. And then this one is called the, the uh, scapula here. Here. The bone here. The bone of the shoulder. Okay. It's called this. I think it's not showing on the they didn't uh, label that part, but here. The scapula and then the clavicle. Clavicle is also called the color bone. The one you've been, you've been naming as Rollins chain. What do people call Rollins chain? That bone is called as the color bone or the clavicle. And then we have the what? The scapula. So these two bones, the clavicle and the scapula or the shoulder blade, are the bones that allows the hand to attach itself to the main body. So we call these two bones as the pectoral ghetto pectoral ghetto so pectoral ghetto consists of so let's go back to our previous slide the pectoral ghetto is made up of the the um, clavicle and then the scapula okay the pectoral ghetto is made up, so it's here Pectoral girdle is made up of two triangular bones of the shoulder blade or the scapula and two collar bones or the clavicles. The pectoral girdle attaches the forelimbs to the rest of the skeleton. Okay, now watch here. If you watch the, the, the skeleton, you see we have left and right. Is that not it? Your body. You have the left side of your body and you have the right. The right side. Or you have the left side of your body and you have the right side of your body. Okay, so whatever you are seeing here. Whatever you are seeing here can equally be seen here. Is it clear? So you are saying that the pectoral girdle has been divided into two or has two divisions, the left and then the right. Is it clear? Okay. So these are the two uh, uh, bones, the clavicle and then the scapula that makes up the, the pectoral girdle. Now let's come back to our pelvic girdle, this one. This is pelvic girdle. Yeah. So if you watch the diagram very well, you realize that if this bone is not present, there is no way the leg can attach itself to the body. If you are really following, you realize that in the absence of this bone here, yeah, there is no way your leg can be attached to the main body. Okay. So this limp ghetto is what we call the pelvic ghetto so this is a pelvic ghetto this this whole thing makes up the what pelvic ghetto okay this whole thing makes up the pelvic ghetto now when you take the pelvic ghetto here this pelvic ghetto okay this pelvic ghetto allows the leg to attach itself to the what body of the skeleton uh -huh. Now, this pelvic ghetto, uh, unlike the, the pectoral ghetto that I said, you can, it can be divided into two like this, where you can have left and right, okay? This pelvic ghetto has been fused, like, though there are two different things, left and right, they are joined together at the vent, when I say ventral orientation, uh, Justin, if you are, no, not Justin, uh, I saw pearl, it's pearl here, so if you are around, let me see your hand. 
It's pure um okay. Pure unmute yourself and tell us what you mean by ventral view. Pearl. Adam. Yes. What do you uh, when we are looking at orientation, body orientation, when I say ventral view, what does that mean? Ma'am, mm -hmm. the view from the like, from the down, the leg. Hey, Pearl. Madam. Don't throw your biology away. Ventral view, when we are looking at orientation, body orientation. You have dorsal, ventral, lateral. So what is ventral view? I say, uh, give me the vent, draw the ventral view of a mosquito. Meaning what? Mm -hmm. Have you forgotten? Who can help us? I can see two participants raise and who are those that have raised? Whoever have raised their hand, let me see. Madam, it's, it's Desmond. Desmond. Okay. Madam. Yes, madam. All right. So, what do you mean by ventral, ventral view? view? The view from the stomach. The view, good. So, the view from there. So, when I'm lying on my belly, okay, that is the ventral view. Is that not it? When my back, if it is like my back, is the dorsal. The sideways is the what? Lateral. Good. Very good. So, I'm saying that the reason why I brought this ventral view is because, um, I told you that when you take the pelvic girdle, okay, this pelvic girdle, here, this, all, all this thing makes up the pelvic girdle, okay. Now, unlike the pectoral girdle that you can see a distinct division, with this with the left and right, the pelvic girdle, like, has been fused, the, the bones of the, the bones that makes up the pelvic girdle has been fused at the ventral view here. You can see some line over here. The place I've labeled as pubic symphysis here. So this is where the, the, the fusion is taking place at. So the bone here, the, this pelvic ghetto, okay, the one at the left and the one at the right, at the right have been fused as one at the middle. And the middle or the, 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 the point at which the fusion occurred is what we call the pubic symphysis here. This line that I am using the arrow to show here, the point at which the joining was done, or the joining occurred, or the fusion occurred, is called the pubic symphysis. Now, watch here too. If you look at the pelvic girdle, okay, one side of the pelvic girdle, or the half portion here, half portion of the pelvic girdle is called the innominate bone. Innominate bone, it is spelled I-N-N-O-M-I-N-A-T-E. Okay, I'm taking it again. Half of the pelvic ghetto, half side, this half, and then this half. So the individual halves are called innominate bone. Okay, now this innominate bone fuses together at a center called the pubic symphysis here. When I ask you that, what's an innominate bone? Innominate bone is the half of the bone that makes up the, the pelvic ghetto. Okay, now this innominate bone here at the left side and the innominate bone at the right side fuse together at the center here, at the middle here, when you are lying on your belly. And that side of fusion is what we call the word pubic of symphysis. You are looking at pelvic ghetto, you are looking at this whole bone. Pubic of symphysis. Now, when you take the pelvic ghetto also, um, this pelvic ghetto in general, or all of them, are made up of three bones, okay? Three bones, three single, single, single bones collectively make up the pelvic ghetto. Or in other words, these three, three small, small bones or three bones come together to form an innominate bone. I told that a nominate bone is one side or half the pelvic ghetto. Another half pelvic ghetto is called what? A nominate bone. Are you okay? Now, if you take an innominate bone, an innominate bone is made up of 
three small bones that have been put together. So three bones put together makes up an innominate bone. Okay? Another three bones at the other side put together make up this innominate bone. Is it clear? So innominate, innominate bone come together at a center called pubic of synthesis. Okay? And I'm saying that the three bones that make up an innominate bone are Ilium. If you look at the diagram very well, you can see ilium. This is ilium. So this bone, this part of the pelvic ghetto, or this part of the innominate bone, here, here, this one, this one, where my arrow is pointing, is called what? Ilium. Okay? This part is called what? Ilium. Another bone that make up an innominate bone, yes, whose hand, uh, two participants raise hands, who are those two? Let me see. Okay, Justin, your hand is up. Which other? Atta Desmond, your hand is up. Who else? Okay, so let me hear from Desmond first. And then Justin will come. So Desmond, unmute yourself. Desmond, if you can hear me, I can see your hand up. So unmute yourself and talk to us. After that, Justin will also unmute himself and talk to us. Desmond, are you there? Oh, Justin, if you are there, um, I, I saw your yeah. hand up. Yeah, yes. madam. Yes. Um, okay, madam. Um, please, we're talking about an innominate bone. Yes. Um, is it the fusion of the sacrum and the coccyx that makes the uh, innominate bone? Is it that one? Again with your question. Is it a fusion? Okay, so I was asking if the innominate bone consists the sacrum and the coccyx. No, 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 no. Watch here. If you can remember when we're in class, when we're looking at the vertebral column, I said the we have five types of vertebral column. We have the thoracic, the um the thoracic, the cervical, the lumbar, the sacral. Is that not it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I told you that yes, the, the tailbone, the tailbone has been fused as one called the coccyx, okay? This, the coccyx and then the sacrum has to do with vertebral column. Okay. Coccyx and sacrum are for vertebral oh, column, oh, okay. okay? But That's what cool. we are looking at now is the pelvic ghetto. Okay, okay. Okay, now I said that when you take the yeah. pelvic ghetto, okay? Okay. You, you can okay. see where the pelvic ghetto is. Look at what I'm showing you. You can see yeah. where the arrow is going huh? This whole structure yeah. Yeah. is at the pelvic ghetto, okay? And I'm saying that mm -hmm. when you take this whole structure, eh? yes, the pelvic ghetto, you see, if I'm, if I'm to yes, divide your body into two, you can see left and right. Is that not it? If I divide your body into two, mm -hmm. you become left and right. Yes, madam. Uh -huh. Now, the half yeah. part, half part yes, of the pelvic yeah. ghetto, it's called innominate bone. So let's say if this is left and right, this side is called innominate bone. This one is called innominate bone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, madam. Okay. So now, this innominate bone, which is the half on the left, half on the right, has been fused as one. Okay. And the point at which they joined, or the point at which they were put together, one. Okay. It's what we call the pubic. It's tibia. called a pubic synthesis. synthesis. Do you understand it? Do, do you get it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yes, when, madam. You, when you take an okay. innominate bone here, when you take here, so one side here, this is an innominate bone. This is another innominate bone. Is that not it? So you realize that okay. this one and this one have okay. been joined yes, together by here. Do you get it? Together. Okay. The point of contact. Yes. Yeah, so this is the point of contact where the two innominate okay. bone join. It's called the pubic synthesis. Is that okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. And now I said that when you take one, yes, when you take one innominate bone, this one, one. Okay. There are three bones that come together to form an innominate oh, bone. Innominate bone. Oh, okay. Do you understand? When you take this yes, one, madam, to, I get this innominate bone too. There are three bones that come together to form an innominate bone. To form the 
Okay. Do you understand? Now, yes, madam. Those three bones that come together to form the innominate bone are, let's watch it. Watch it one innominate bone. Are the ilium. This is the ilium. This. Mm. Okay. The sacrum and the coccyx is not part. The sacrum and the coccyx okay. has to do with vertebral column. But if you look at the column. labeling, look at where the labeling is. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. Okay. Yes, so, yes madam. Uh huh. So, um, the three bones that make up the innominate bone are the ilium. Okay. Come in. Yes. So, this is the ilium. Okay. We have another bone called the itchium. This is the itchium. Look at it. Look on this. I believe you are seeing what I'm showing. This is the itchium. Are you okay? This is the itchium. And the third bone is called the pubis. So these are the, see, these are the three, the, the three bones I'm talking about. This is ilium. This is the itchium. And here is the pubis. So these three small bones collectively come together to give you an innominate Bone. Justin, are you clear? Justin, are you there? Yes, madam. Are you clear? Yes, you? madam. Okay. I'm clear. All right, good. This morning, your hand was up. Or oh, I've lost you. Is this one around? Is this one gone? Okay. Any other question? Any question? Something I said you didn't understand from anybody? Oh, if I'm not getting question, means you're understanding what I am saying. Okay, say them. Jan, two, your hand is up. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to your question. Tell them I'm listening. Unmute yourself and talk to us. Say them. Nice. I can't even see. Better than to unmute yourself. I'm even looking for you to unmute you. Okay, as we wait for Sedem to unmute herself. Any other question from any of you? Madam. Yes. Madam. Yes. I'm listening. Please, so is sacrum and cosmic not part of? It's what? Oh. So that is lost. But if I should get what she was saying, I think she was trying to ask whether sacrum and coccyx, whether they are not part of the uh, innominate bone. If I don't know if that's the question you wanted to ask. I told you the way you're at, yes. She said, Madam, that's what she said. That's what she said, right? Yes, 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 please. Yeah, I think I answered that earlier. Is that not it? I told you that the sacrum and the woman, please cast your mind back yes, to when we started. Uh, mm -hmm. Cast your mind back to when we started the skeletal system. When we're looking at the vertebral color, we said we have the tailbone, we have the, 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 the sacrum. We have quadra, we have uh, lumbar, thoracic, cervical. Is that not it? So the sacrum and then the coccyx are for the vertebral column. I told you that the tailbone for the caudal vertebra have bones fused together to be called what? Coccyx. So the coccyx makes up your tail. But because you and I don't have physical tail, it is not showing in the physical. But you take organisms like cats, dogs, those that have tail, you can really see they are coccyx. Are you okay? The sacrum has to do with the what? The abdominal region. 
the abdominal region. So sacrum and coccyx are for the vertebral column. When it comes to the pelvic girdle, the bones that make up the pelvic girdle or the bones that make up an innominate bone. I told you, innominate bone is the half portion of the whole pelvic girdle. So this is an innominate bone. This is also an innominate bone, okay. okay? So the three bones that make up an innominate bone are the ilium. This is the ilium, okay? We have the pubis. This is the pubis here. And we have the ichium. Very good. Do you understand? So these three yes. bones are the ones that make one an innominate bone. Is it correct? okay? Is it okay? Yes, madam. Very good. Yes. So when I ask you to write, when I ask you to give me the bones that make up the pelvic ghetto in general, I expect you to mention ichium, ilium, and what? Pubis. Pubis. Okay. And I said okay. the pubic of symphysis is the point at which the two innominate bones join together. The line you are seeing here. here. The line you are seeing here is the what? Pubic symphysis. Are you okay? Are you okay? Very good. Now, if you look at... Um, then, say them, your hand is up. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm so, in other words, can we say the pubic symphysis is the fusion of two innominate bones? Excellent. Very good. That's it. The pubic symphysis is the point at which two innominate bones are put together or fused together. Is it clear? Okay. Excellent. That's yes, it. madam. It tells me you people are really following what we are doing. You are welcome. You're welcome. Any other question? Any other question? Any other? So, if there's no other question, if there's no other question, basically, that is what uh, the pelvic ghetto is about. A, a quick review. We said the limb ghettos. When I ask you what are limb ghettos? Limb ghettos are bones that allows the limb to attach itself to the axial skeleton, okay? And uh, there are two divisions of limb ghettos, or there are two types of limb ghettos. We have the pectoral ghetto and then the pelvic ghetto. Pectoral ghetto are the bones that allow the forearm or the hand to attach itself to the axial skeleton. And then the pelvic ghetto are the bones that allow the legs or the hand limbs to attach itself to the axial skeleton. And I said that the pectoral ghetto, the bones that make up the pectoral ghetto are the clavicle and the scapula. Clavicle can also be called the collar, where you go call the rolling chain, the bone here. And then the bones that make up the pelvic ghetto are the ilium, ichium, and then the what? Pubis. Now, the point at which two innominate bones join is what we call the pubic symphysis. Are you there? Now, basically, the pelvic girdle is what make up your hip bone. So without the hip bone, the, 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 the leg cannot attach itself to the axial skeleton. Are you okay? Now, let me mention another beautiful word for you. You see the bone, the, the, the hole over here? The hole here. The hole that the, the, the head of the femur has been inserted into. The name of that hole is called acetala bone. Okay, as I said earlier, the bone here, the hole here. You see that there's a hole here that the head, this head, has fused into. So that, that hole is called an acetala bone. Now, this acetala bone consists of the ilium, the ichium, the ilium, uh, the, the ilium, the pubis, and then the ichium, okay? All of them come together and meet over here to form this hole called the acetala bone. Just in your hand is up. Madam. Yes. Madam. Yes. Please, can you spell the acetala bone? Yes. Please, can you spell the acetala bone? Okay, it's spelled A C E. A C E. A C E T A. Yes, madam. T A. B U L U M, acetalabum. 
All right, thank you, madam. Okay, yeah. Marvin, I saw your hand up. Yeah, madam, that's what I wanted to ask, the okay. spelling. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, it's called A-C-E-T-A-B-U-L-U-M, acetalabu. Are we okay? I believe there is no other question. So, basically, that's about the, the appendicular skeleton, okay? Now, let's look at another beautiful topic called joints. 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 When I ask you, what are joints? Okay, we say that joint is formed where two or more bones meet. So if I tell you that, if I tell you that, let's meet at our joint. It means that I am going there, that particular place, I am going there, at that same place, you are also coming there, okay? So anywhere that two or more bones meet, that place is called what? Joint. So for instance, the joint of two, uh, the joint of two innominate bone is called, um, the, boy, the joint of two innominate bone is called pubic symphysis. Are you okay? So when we talk of joint, joint are places or is a place where two or more bones meet. Now, joints can either be movable or immovable. Movable means that it is able to move. Okay, the joint is able to move. Immovable means that it is fixed. It cannot move. Okay. Now, the joint of the head, the skull, is immovable. If not, your brain can move. Okay, so the bones that come together to form the, the skull or the, yes, the skull, basically the bones there or the joints there are immovable. But when you talk of movable joints, they are joints that allow movement. They are joints that are able to uh, move, okay? Now, bones that come together to form a joint are held together by something we call ligaments. Okay, when we, if you could remember when we started the skeletal system, I told you that the skeleton skeletal system consists of ligaments, tendons, uh, cartilages, and then bones. If you can remember, I told you that the skeletal system consists of uh, ligaments, tendons, cartilages, and blah blah blah, and bones. Okay, so I'm saying that uh, bones are held together. Let's say a bone of the hand, a bone, uh, I mean, the, the bone of the forearm, the bone of the upper arm, okay? All these bones are put together or held together by uh, 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 something we call what? Ligament, okay? Ligament. I'm called ligament. So, muscles are attached to bones by tough bands of tissues called tendons. So, remember that if a woman is going to the skeletal system, I made mention of tendons, cartilages, ligaments bones all these things make up at the skeletal system now i said in the previous slides that joints can either be movable or immovable or immovable okay immovable joints means that they don't allow movement they cannot move but the movable ones um the movable ones allows what movement in all directions or allows uh, uh, the, 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 the bones to what to move or that point to what to move. Now, somebody should un unmute yourself. Look at your system. Look at, I said that joints are where two or more bones meet. Okay. So look at your system and mention some joints that you can think of. Where, where we can, uh, 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 we can see joints. Now, what brains? Unmute yourself and talk to me. Is Prince there? I'm the question again. I am saying that we said joints are where two or more bones meet. So any place that two or more bones meet, that place is called my joint. So I'm saying that examine yourself, okay, and try and give me examples of joints or what you think uh, can be said as joints. Madam, please, um, the shoulder. The shoulder. Yes, so the shoulder is a joint, yes. So we have the shoulder joint. Uh, perfect, your hand is up.
Perfect, your hand is up. Uh-oh, yeah, who, who else have raised their hand? I can see four people's hands up. So who else hand is up? I think I've lost perfect. I can't hear from perfect again. It's perfect there. Okay, Justin, I can see your hand up. Rejoice, I can also see your hand up. So Justin, mention one part of the body that have joint. Um, madam. Yes. When I'm the elbow. The elbow, good, good. Rejoice, I can also see your hand up. Madam. The knee. The knee. Oh, excellent. The knee. Good. The knee. Wow, that's good. It's okay. It's okay. Now you should mute yourself. That's good. It tells me you are really following what we are doing. So you should all of you should mute yourself. Yes. Mute yourself. Send them since you Madam. are yes. <laughs> And now what's of the ankle? What of the... Yes, the ankle is also a joint. Excellent. That's good. The ankle is also a joint. Yes, yes. Ankle. Ankle. It's also a joint. Okay, madam. Yes. Madam. Yes. Can we say the wrist to is a joint? Can we say the... Wrist. Yes, the wrist is also a joint. The wrist is also a joint. Okay. okay. The wrist is also a joint. Good. That tells me we are really good. Okay. So they are saying that joints are where two or more bones are meet. Okay. And I said there are there are types of joints. We have the movable. It's okay. Every other hand should be down unless you want to ask a question. Say that you want to ask a question. Marvin. Madam. Yes. This is the muscles are attached to the bones, two bones of tissue. I said muscles are attached to bones by two bands of tissue called tendons. It's on the screen. Can you hear me now? It's on the screen. I've just gone to that place. Muscles are attached. To bones by top bands of tissue called tendons. Are we there? Okay, so as I said earlier, uh, we have types of joints. We have the movable ones and immovable ones. Okay, immovable joints means that they do not move or they do not allow movement. But the movable joints tells you that they allow what movement. Okay, now. Let's look at the different types of movable joints. Let's look at the, the different types of movable joints. One, we can talk of a uh, bone and socket joints. When I ask you to give me types of joints, or let's say right types of joints, give me five types of joints. We have one, or yes, give me four types of joints. We have one, bone and socket joints. Two, we have hinge joints. Three, gliding joints. Four, pivot joints. So these are the types of joints we have. And I'm going to tell you where all, all these joints are located in your body. Okay? We have types of movable joints. One, ball and socket joints. Two, hinge joints. Three, gliding joints. And four, pivot joints. Okay? When I talk of ball and socket joints, we said that ball and socket joints allow movement in all directions. That is why you are able to move your, all of you should be in your room and be moving your shoulder to any direction. You're able to move your shoulder to any direction. Ball and socket joints allow you to move the what? To move in any direction. So places in which you can find ball and socket joints are the shoulder and the hip joints. Okay? So as I'm sitting here right now, I am able to move my what? My, my shoulder because I'm able to move my shoulder to any direction because the joint over there is called what? Ball and socket joint. Um, let me go back to my skeleton and show you 
ball and socket joint. So when you come here, here, this side, the joint over here is called ball and socket. Where is the ball? The ball is the head of the humerus. The socket is the glenoid cavity I was talking about, the space in which you plug in the head. That is why we call it ball and socket. It's when you want to plug uh, your phone or your charger. You put the head of the charger into a socket. Are you okay? So the head of the charger is the ball, and then the socket in which you are putting the charger is the what? Uh, the space in which you are putting the charger is the socket. So this side gives you ball and socket joints here. So this ball and socket joint allows movement in so many directions. Another place that you can find the ball and socket joint is here. The hip. Yeah, yeah, this side. This side, the hip joint. This side is also, this type of joint is called ball and socket. You can see the head of the femur being inserted into the what? The acetalabum. So the acetalabum is the socket, and then the head of the femur is the ball. So this gives you ball and socket joint because you are fixing this one into this. If you come here to, you are fixing the head of the humerus into the what? glenoid cavity. So this is a, space, a place where you can find ball and socket joint. Another area that you can find ball and socket joint is here. So you are saying that ball and socket joint allows movement in all direction, okay? Now, another type of joint we'll talk about is the hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint allows movement in only one direction. It is allowing movement in only one direction. That is why, I, now, uh, hinge joints can be found in the elbow here, or your knee. That is where you can find hinge joints. You can see that if I want to move, I can only move my elbow in this direction. If I want to move to the other direction, means I have to turn my whole body and change. But with the shoulder, I can be here and be moving my shoulder. This is the ball and socket joint. Or your hip. You can be moving your hip in any direction. You can be moving the shoulder in any direction. But the hinge joint allows movement in only one direction. So if I find hinge joint over here, your elbow has a hinge joint. Okay? That is why before it allows movement in only one direction. That is why I can only move this way. Like this. If I want to move like this, it means I have to turn the whole body and move like this. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So you are saying that hinge joint allows movement in only one direction. So you can find hinge joints here. You can find hinge joints at your knee. You realize that you can only move the knee at only one direction. If you want to go the next direction, you must turn the whole body and then use the, uh, I mean, move the knee, okay? Now, the joint over here, here, your finger here, this side. It's also a hinge joint. You realize I can only move in one direction. Here. If I want to go this, I have to turn the whole thing and go this way. Do you understand? So these are the places where we can find hinge joints. Hinge joints allows movement um, in only one direction. So this side. Okay, so uh, this side here, you have that this side here make, gives you your elbow, okay? So the elbow joint consists of the bone of the femur, the lower femur, and then the bone of the radius and ulna gives you your what? Um, um, hinge joint, okay? So this is an elbow, uh, this is a, a head joint. The bone of your elbow is what? Hinge joint. The bone at your elbow is hinge joint, okay? Now, this is what I was also talking about. When you watch here, the bones over here, this one and this one, you see this is your palm, is that not it? So the bones of the palm and the bones of the fingers, they have a meeting point here. I told that bone joints are where two or more bones meet. So the bones over here, the bones of your palm, which is the metacarpals, and then the bones of the phalanges meet over here. Are you okay? So this joint is also what a hinge joint because it allows here, it allows movement in only one direction. When it comes to the knee area too, this is also a hinge joint. 
Because you can see here, we are not plugging anything into anything. Here we are plugging. That's why we call it ball and socket. But this side, this one, and this one, we are not plugging anything. So we call this one hinge joint. So this is what also hinge joint. So the, the, the bone of the joint of the knee consists of the bone of the femur and then the bone of the what? Uh, the, 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 the tibia. Exactly. The bone of the femur and then the bone of the what? tibia. This one will give you your knee joint, which is also a hinge joint. I don't know if I'm making sense. Okay. Same applies to your toe here. Yeah. When you take the toe to, I, I like what, like how I showed you for the finger here. You can equally see a hinge joints at the toe level. That place too, you can see hinge joint. So this is the second type of joint. We've made mention of ball and socket. We've made mention of hinge joints. Now let's go to gliding joints, or you can say sliding and gliding joints. Okay, sliding and gliding joints. Sliding and gliding joints allow uh, bones to move over surfaces. Sliding and gliding joints allow bones to move over surfaces. Sliding and gliding joints allow bones to move over surfaces. Now, you can find sliding and gliding joints here, your wrist, your wrist and your ankle. Your wrist and your ankle, is where you can find sliding and gliding joints. So this is your wrist here. I told that the bones of the wrist here are called what? Carpals. And the bones of the ankle are called what? Tarsals. So that is why I go to do this. Because the bones over there are, if I say sliding, it's like they are moving over each other. They are able to, the, the bones are able to move over each other to allow you to do this. Do you understand? So the bones over here or the joints here are called sliding and gliding joints. In the same way, the, the, the bones at your ankle come together to form a joint called sliding and gliding. I believe I am making some sense. And then the last joint we'll talk about is the pivot joint. Pivot joints. They allow movement from side to side. And pivot joint is normally found at the neck. Okay, you can find pivot as you're able to move your neck like this. Remember, we have axis and atlas. Okay, so the axis and the atlas come together to form a joint called what? Pivot joints. Are you okay? That is why I'm able to use allows me to move sideways. Do this or you do that. Are you okay? So this is some. So when I ask you to uh, to to state types of bones, uh, sorry, types of joints and where they are located, I expect you to be able to write them. Uh, type, I mean types of movable joints, okay, and their location. You should be able to write them and then their location. That means if you don't have any question, unmute yourself. If you don't have any question, mute yourself. Because I can hear. Yes, good. All right. So when I ask you to write types of bones, or sorry, types of joints, and their location, you can write the ball and socket joints, and the locations are the shoulder and then the hip joints. Hinge joints, location, elbow, the knee, and even the finger. Gliding and sliding joints. So you can say gliding joints. They are located in the ankles and then the what? The wrist. And then we have the pivot joint, which is located at the neck or in the neck. Any question? We are almost done. Any question? If there is no question, then let's look at injuries to bones and joints. Okay. Some of us can get injured. You get injured. I mean, some uh, injuries of the bones and joints. We can talk of fracture. Okay. We can also talk of um, sprains and then dislocation. If I ask, if I say dislocate, it means that you have moved from one location to the other. So there is a, a, a movement. Mm -hmm. 
that moves from one place to another. Now, fracture. Fracture means that like a, there is a breakage in the bone. Right. Are you okay? All these things can be caused by accidents. Sometimes you are running anyhow in the house. Before you realize now, bam, you've just um, hurt yourself. Okay. Now let's look at the last. Marvin, your hand is up. Can what? Be a baby get fractured. Yes. Um. The tendency. Okay. On mute yourself and let me answer the question. Now, the tendency of a baby getting fractured is slow. You see, I told you that when you are when you are small, we babies, um, their bones are not as hard as you see. When something is very dry, that is when it's able to break like that. But when it is a bit softer, the tendency of it breaking is low. Do you understand it? Babies are fragile, yes. But the probability of them having a dislocation is quite low. But you as an adult can easily uh, get dislocated because as we grow, you see, as we grow, eh, the bones become dry alongside. So some, that is why as we grow, the number of bones you have in your system keeps on reducing because some, some of them breaks along the line. Eh? But babies don't normally or will not as regularly suffer from what uh, uh, bone breaking because their bones are not as hard as you and I because we are adults. I think I've answered your question. Yes, please. Okay, good. Now let's look at antagonistic marbles. Antagonistic marbles. They are marbles that occur in pets to cause movement. Say that your hand is up. I have to end the class. Okay? Yes, madam, please, the ink juice again. Yeah, it has out. What has happened to the ink juice? I should go right. <laughs> Yes, please. So that is on the screen. Okay. Can you see them? Yes, please. Good. We have to end the class. Say them. You still have a okay. I think your hand is down now. Okay. So let's look at antagonistic models. The, the last part of the slide, then we can call the class uh, off. Um, uh, then, then your hand is still up. You still want to ask a question? No. If you don't want to ask a question, then put yourself on mute. Have you done that? Okay. Okay. Okay, so I know of antagonistic muscles. Antagonistic muscles are muscles. You see, I told you when you're looking at the um, characteristics of living and non living things, so when you're looking at the uh, diversity of living and living things, I told you that um, in classroom, I said that we are able to move because of what? We have because of what? Muscles. Without, it is not the bone that is making you move, it is the muscles that bring about movement. The bone is just allowing attachment. That's why we're looking at functions of the skeleton. We said the skeleton allows attachment for what? Muscles. So the skeleton is serving as a surface so that muscles can be attached to it. For you to be able to move your hand, just like the way I'm moving my hand. For you to be able to walk. For you to be able to talk. Are you okay? So anytime I am moving my hand, it means that my muscles are contracting and relaxing. When I am walking, it means that my muscles are contracting and relaxing. Are you okay? So anything that brings about movement or anything that brings about movement is due to contraction and relaxation of what? Muscles. Okay? So we have a type of muscles called antagonistic muscles. Antagonistic muscles are muscles that work in pair. They are in pair like, it's like a battery. So antagonistic muscles are in pair like this. Are you okay? Now, when you want to move, 
or for movements to occur, one of the muscles must relax, the other one must what? Contract. One of the muscles must relax, the other one must contract, okay? So, relaxation and contraction of muscles bring about what? Movements. I said that there are muscles that occur in first to fourth movement. As one muscle contracts, the other one relaxes, okay? Now, um, an example of an antagonistic muscle are the triceps and biceps. Tricep is a muscle. Bicep is a muscle. These two muscles come together to form antagonistic muscles. Are you okay? Now, when I want to lift my arm, as I have done now, what is happening is that these two muscles, which are the triceps and then the biceps, one of them must contract for the other one to relax so that I can raise my hand. In the same way, when I want to bring my hand down, one of them must contract, the other one must what? relax, okay? They all work in opposite direction. All of them cannot contract at the same time. When all of them contract at the same time, it's going to stiffen the, the, the muscles, which is going to cause muscle pull. Are you okay? So all of them must not contract at the same time. One, as one is contracting, the other one is what? Relaxing, okay? So when I want to lift my hand, what happens is that the triceps, okay, the triceps relaxes, and then the biceps, could I say something that's relaxed? Relax means that, you know, you have obtained, uh, uh, if I say relax yourself, sit down at a comfortable way. Are you okay? Contraction means that it has um, closed up. Relaxes. When you sit down, your pulse opens up. When you contract or when you constrict, it closes. Do you understand it? So, when I want to lift my arm, the triceps and biceps, what is happening is that as I lift my arm, the triceps relaxes and the biceps contracts. In the same way, when I want to put my hand down, it will be the opposite. Bansa, Mauno, your hand is up. Unmute yourself and ask the question. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. Ah, okay. Then mute yourself again. So as I was saying, I'm saying that if you are raising your hand, the triceps will relax, the biceps will contract. Then when I'm putting my hand down, it changes, vice versa. Okay, so for instance, my hand is up, triceps has relaxed, biceps has contract. When I bring my hand down, the biceps will relax, triceps will what? Contract. That's why I mean that, vice versa. So the opposite. When you put it up, triceps relax, biceps contract. When you bring it down, triceps contract, biceps relax. I hope I am clear. So when I ask you to write the mechanism or what happens when the what happens to cause the hand to be raised up or for the hand to be straightened? You tell me that when the hand is straightened or what happens is that the triceps will relax and then the biceps will contract, causing the hand to be able to up, to be straightened or to be raised up. Okay, and when you want to bring the hand down, the biceps is going to relax, the triceps will up, contract. You just turn it the opposite form and then you are cool to go. I uh, think on that note, time for questions. That is basically something about skeletal system. So we have brought skeletal systems and successful end.